Thank you. <laughs> Lieutenant Governor, thank you. It's an honor to be with you tonight, Senator Grassley, and as well as you and your family. Thank you for uh, your hospitality that I always get. And I also want to recognize all of my competitors that are here. Um, let me tell you, each and every one of them that would do a heck of a lot better job than what we got in the White House right now. You might say that, Newt, we're involved in a project called Operation Occupy the White House. It's an honor to be back in Iowa and to campaign across this uh, great state. Uh, truly a place where people are the salt of the earth. There are men and women who love this country, who want to give their children a brighter future. You know, the president talks about when in the future. But you can't win the future by selling off the future. It's wrong to put our children's financial future in the hands of these foreign creditors, our energy security in the hands of foreign countries that frankly are hostile to America. And no one can argue that the president didn't inherit a bad economy. But no one can argue that he ain't made it worse either. 14 million Americans now without work. One out of eight on food stamps. The Washington solution? Stimulate the economy. Grow government. About the only thing they've stimulated is a higher debt. The answer to this mess in Washington, D.C. is not the status quo and it's not tinkering around the edges. We got to stop the big spending, the bailouts, the big government policies that empower the bureaucrats. You know, some want to reform Washington with a pair of tweezers. I'm for bringing a wrecking ball to Washington. My cut, balance, and grow plan cuts taxes for every sector. The low, flat, and fair 20% rate makes calculating and filling out that tax form simpler. Simple enough that you can put it on a postcard. You can put it on that. I bet even Tim Geithner can get his taxes in if we give him a postcard this size and this simple. I'll eliminate the corporate tax loopholes, the crackdown on the Washington influence industry. You know, scores of Washington lobbyists are making a living carving a tax out of those loopholes for corporations and I want to make I want to make a little history I want to make those loopholes history my plan cuts federal spending in a big way it balances that budget by 2020 and I know that those deficits are caused by overspending not by under taxing and the president I will spend my time and my campaign, and not only my political capital, campaigning all across this country to pass a balanced budget amendment to the United States Constitution. You know, what's, what's lacking in Washington, D.C. in ideas? What's lacking up there is courage. We have a Washington Super Committee today because the president kicked the can down the road on reforming the entitlements and cutting spending. What's it been, Newt? We've had 20 different committees now over 30 years to talk about these commissions to deal with the debt. And you know why? Because it's been easier for people to put studies together than it is for have people to have the courage to stand up and say, here's what needs to be done and do what needs to be done. America is longing for leadership in this country. That's what's missing in Washington, D.C. You know, even one of uh, President Clinton's advisors, he said he was afraid the super committee was going to fail. But the difference is this. If they fail, it's going to lead to more than half a trillion dollars of arbitrary cuts to our defense budget, for instance. They're included in that debt ceiling deal, I guess supposedly to force them to act. 
This shows you just how broken Washington, D.C. is. The price for politicians failing to do their job is that Americans are going to be forced to live in a nation that is less secure. And our young men and women in uniform are going to have fewer resources to keep them safe and to fight the battles that need to be fought across the world. We shouldn't have to rely upon these gimmicks that make Washington politicians do the right thing. I'll show the courage to reform entitlements. Matter of fact, I've already laid out a plan last week that does just that. My plan protects the current beneficiaries of Social Security. But as I was sharing with a group of young people before I walk in here, I really care about that next generation of young American workers. Who is it that's going to protect their investments in Social Security and Medicare? We have to have the courage to reform these entitlement programs for the long haul. We have to have the courage to say that the current tax system is fundamentally flawed and offer real change. Cut taxes, take out the loopholes, cut the federal spending, balance the budget by 2020 by those spending cuts and pro-growth policies and a balanced budget amendment and, and something else. I happen to think it's time to force Washington, D.C. to kick the earmark habit for good. Stop the earmarks. If one comes to the bud budget comes with an earmark, I don't care if it's a Democrat or Republican, I will take out a veto pen, and that will be vetoed. And until the budget gets balanced, I'm going to oppose across the board pay freeze for Congress and all federal employees pay outside of the military and the public safety areas. I happen to believe there's a clear choice in this race between the status quo tinkers who represent the establishment, those that support bailouts and oppose major tax reforms such as the flat tax. My approach is to break up the Washington establishment with fundamental reform of the tax code, putting a stop to the spending binge and the gravy train of those beltway lobbyists. The hard truth is this. The future of America is too important to be left to the Washington politicians. Let's take our country back, and with your vote and with your support, let's take our country back to those principles that America was based upon and see America great again. God bless you. Thank you for your support. God bless our great country. Thank you.